Welcome back to Master Data Management 1. In the previous video, you learned how to attach your sources to your newly deployed model. You also learned how to configure your sources to set up the source-specific restrictions. In this video, you will learn about something called the initial load and how it can be used to help insert new sources into an MDM solution. So let's take a look. In the last video, you may have noticed that there was an option to enable initial load when you first clicked on the action button. The initial load is a very useful feature that allows you to safely import large amounts of data when adding a new source. When a new source is added to a model, it's initially inactive until we activate it. By enabling the initial load, we are opening the channel of communication between the Atmosphere platform and the MDM platform for that specific source. We can begin this process by clicking the action button next to the MySQL source and clicking on the Enable Initial Load option. You can tell that the channel is being opened by the spinning image next to the source name, as well as the color of the node changing from gray to blue. Now that our initial load has been successfully set up, we are now prepared to accept data from our MySQL source. There is another key feature of the initial load that needs to be mentioned. The initial load will not only open the channel between Atmosphere and MDM for the selected source, but it also blocks all other channels from receiving those updates. Essentially, the initial load helps you insert bulk data from new sources by restricting changes to existing golden records. Since a new source will most likely result in the creation of new golden records and updates to many of your existing golden records, the initial load will ensure that all of this new data will be imported without the fear of corruption from other sources. The initial load mode adds a temporary extra layer of security to ensure the bulk load performs its updates and creates properly. Once the initial load of data from the new source has been completed, you will be able to allow the new source to accept channel updates normally, which will also open the other attached sources channels as well. Any updates that come in for blocked sources during an initial load process will be queued and processed normally once the initial load is complete. Now setting up the initial load mode is pretty simple, so I'll demonstrate how to do it for our MySQL source, and then you'll have some time to do it after the video to try it on your own. When we left off, we were actually here on this screen, looking at the different configuration options from the sources sub tab. The first thing that you should notice is that the circular nodes to each of our different sources here should show up as gray. This means that they have not yet been activated, and this is pretty typical for new sources. In order to enable my initial load for the MySQL source, I'm simply going to click on the Actions icon next to that source and select the Enable Initial Load from the drop-down menu. You should notice that the Actions icon will turn into a spinning icon while it works to enable the initial load. Once complete, the Actions icon will reappear and the gray node will turn into a blue node. This means that the initial load has been enabled successfully. Now one thing to remember is that while this node is blue, no other sources will be able to accept change requests. Only change requests from the MySQL source will be able to make changes to the contact repository. In this case, since we don't have any other active sources, it actually doesn't mean anything uh, for this particular load. But in the future, when you add new sources, it will be important that you finish the initial load so that all of the other sources can then start pulling data in through each of their channels. So now it's your turn to try it on your own. Once you've completed exercise number 10, feel free to start the next video.